My name is Catherine Fazio. Uh, my area of expertise sits at the intersection of law, innovation and strategy and policy. I am a lecturer in the strategy and innovation department here at Questrom and also faculty director for MBA programs. I uh, work on the Startup Cartography Project with, uh, with a team of fellow researchers and authors who include Scott Stern, who's at MIT, Jorge Guzman, who is at Columbia, uh, RJ Andrews, who is, uh, does some extraordinary data visual visualization work at Info We Trust, and Yupeng Liu, who is a graduate student at Rice. The Startup Cartography Project um, maps new business formation over time and across the country at very different levels of geography. So we can look across the United States and down to the address level in different places. And we also look at um, entrepreneurship differently than most others uh, had done in the past. So instead of just looking at the number of new businesses started, we, we do look at that. And then we also consider what's their growth potential? What type of growth are they aiming for when they get started? Most small businesses, kind of what we call Main Street firms, think about uh, the restaurants, the types of companies you would have on Main Street anywhere USA. Restaurants, retail shops, grocery stores, most of those types of firms are aiming for solid growth over time, um, but they're not trying to be the next Amazon or the next Microsoft. There's another group of businesses that from the start are really shooting to uh, create a whole new market um, and just disrupt things or be innovation driven. Um, and those two types of firms, because they're aiming for different things, um, have very different impact on the economy and, uh, and policy. So how did we get started? Um, two of our group were doing research to see if they could take predictive analytics and new business registrations um, and look at startup uh, formation differently. And so they created these different measures and then we worked together to map them. Um, and so we can look at the composition of new businesses over time in different places. Here's the startup cartography map. The bubbles that you're seeing give you a sense of the rate of startup formation. How many new businesses are registering there in the given year? And the color that you're seeing is an indicator of growth potential. So the more neutral the color, the greater the number of new firms there that are Main Street firms. And the darker the blue, the greater the number of new firms that are starting, that are being registered, that are innovation driven, that are aiming from their very first days to try and be the next Amazon, the next Microsoft. Um, one of the things that's exciting about this project is now you can, you can start to see things from this visualization that were hard to see before. And one of those things is that the rate of startup formation, the quantity of entrepreneurship is not necessarily correlated with its growth potential. Great, so just starting with the overall uh, picture of the United States, 
um, you can see one of the trends that was identified in the research. And that is that the quantity of new business starts, the, the, the quantity of startup formation is not correlated uh, with the quality, the growth potential of startup formation. Um, and we can see that looking here, let's compare San Francisco to Miami. San Francisco and Silicon Valley are widely known to be startup capital or hub of the world. And yet the size of the bubble, that's what tells us or shows the, the rate of startup formation, the quantity of entrepreneurship, that's smaller in San Francisco than it is in a place like Miami, where you have a lot more new businesses being formed every year, but they're mostly Main Street firms. They're not, uh, they're not as many innovation-driven firms, firms aiming to be, whether they succeed or not, the next Amazon, the next Microsoft. There's more of those in San Francisco being founded than there are in, uh, in Miami. Now let's take a closer look at some individual cities. So let's zoom in on, on Boston. You can keep scrolling in and get an address level look at the type of entrepreneurship, the type of new businesses that are being founded here. Um, and what you can see, Boston is another innovation ecosystem that has a lot of innovation driven firms. And so you can see that in 2015, there are a lot of these, uh, these innovative firms being founded um, in Kendall Square, that's over across the river in MIT, and certainly in the center of Boston and the financial district there. Um, and if you go back over time, the view that you're seeing here is 2015. If you go back over time and look at 2010, for example, you can see that there was a lot, there's still an ecosystem here. There's still innovation driven firms being founded, but fewer of them. And in this time period between 2010 and 2015, we know that Boston was really investing in its innovation district and that this was a policy priority of Boston and Massachusetts to really build on the university's cluster, the knowledge cluster, the innovation and innovation driven firms that were happening here. So the other thing that, uh, that the Startup Cartography Project allows you to do is not only get a better glimpse of the composition of entrepreneurship, um, but you, you can also see a correlation with some of the policy priorities in different places. In the immediate wake of the pandemic, when the lockdowns first happened in March, we saw a steep drop, a precipitous decline in new business registrations relative to just the year before. Big, big drop there. Then with the passage and implementation of the CARES Act, we saw uh, economic stimulus and relief packages making a big difference. So we see a turnaround. We see new business registrations first plummet, then rebound right around the passage of the CARES Act and then surge beyond 2019 levels. And by the end of 2020, new business registrations were the highest they had ever been, that we had ever seen. And that's pretty dramatic just as a fact in and of itself, but also because the CARES Act was not aimed 
at, uh, at supporting new business starts. It wasn't aimed at creating more startups. It was designed to throw lifelines to existing businesses and current employees and people who may have been laid off. So that act and the supplement that happened in December had ripple effects beyond their initial policy objectives and ones that seem to have a really big and positive impact for uh, startups and entrepreneurship. So let me show you the map uh, the dynamic map we just talked about currently only goes through 2016 um, and we update that uh, periodically over time. Uh, what these charts show you are really recent data um, from the eight states that, ha that make it available on a near real-time basis. So what you can see in these charts, the blue line tracks new business registrations on a week-by-week uh, basis and the gray dotted line is 2019. So that what that lets you do is compare kind of our last normal year to the pandemic year and see how the rate of startup formation changed. And what you can see in the blue line is that trend that I just described. You see uh, new business registrations plummet. And then the green line, that first green line, is when the CARES Act was passed. And that is almost directly correlated with a reversal of that nosedive in new business registrations and the beginning of a rebound, which is then reinforced and accelerated where you see that green dotted line. That's the issuance of stimulus checks. And from there, across the remainder of 2020, we see startup formation continue to rise above 2019 levels and get to a point where it exceeds them by 20%, a significant margin. And down here in that second chart in figure 1D, we see what happens surrounding that second stimulus, the passage of that supplemental act at the very end of 2020. And so we see then that that leads to another jump in new business formation relative to the year before. And this is significant for a host of reasons, but largely because this is a positive policy impact, uh, a kind of shot in the arm, if you'll forgive my pun because of the vaccinations that we're facing, to business dynamism um, that's beyond what those uh, what those statutes and the stimulus checks were directed to. Another thing that we see when we look at this near real time data is that we see the geography of entrepreneurship. Where are these new businesses being started and in what types of, of neighborhoods, we see that changing dramatically. So after the uh, pandemic onset and, and after the passage of the CARES, uh, CARES Act and uh, the stimulus, what we see is new business registrations surging in neighborhoods with a higher share of, of Black residents and in particular, higher income, high black population zip codes. So if you take a quick look at uh, figure 8B here, the neighborhoods that have the highest percentage of black residents 
are represented by those blue lines and you see that upper trajectory and the neighborhoods with the least and the fewest black residents that's the gray line that's pretty much on par with where it was in 2019. so this surge of entrepreneurship that we're seeing this shot in the arm that i as i described it in startup formation is happening in predominantly black, higher income neighborhoods. One of the things that most excites me about the potential for the Startup Cartography Project is that it provides a new lens into the distribution of entrepreneurship and startup formation um, and its geography. And so uh, we can, that opens a door to get more targeted with policy and support. So if a policymaker wants to lever entrepreneurship for economy-wide growth, using our maps, using our data, they can look at the composition of new business registrations in their area. And they can see visually, are we getting the types of entrepreneurship that can potentially lead to the ecosystem changes that we're striving for. Um, and, uh, and they can see, are our policies correlated with the new firm formation that they are hoping to achieve? And they can also, looking at it a little bit differently, say, what type of new form firm formation is happening in our ecosystem? And then think about what types of support do these new businesses need? Mainstream firms need different forms and sources of capital and support than innovation-driven firms. Main Street firms typically need debt. Uh, innovation-driven firms are looking for venture capital and equity. You can then target the mentorship, the capital, and other types of support towards the entrepreneurship that you have. Give those new businesses the support that they need to scale and grow. Um, support the type of dynamism that your ecosystem is exhibiting. Looking at the most recent data and how entrepreneurship has changed in the wake of the pandemic, we see opportunities to support entrepreneurship in neighborhoods that haven't had as much of it, largely because historically there's been uh, less access and more discrimination in terms of getting key entrepreneurial in inputs in, uh, in predominantly black neighborhoods. We now see entrepreneurship happening there. And, uh, and so another, uh, I think, benefit and positive outcome that might come out of the Startup Cartography Project is uh, the ability to, uh, to ask for additional policy support that's targeted towards these neighborhoods because the recovery of our country's economy um, and, uh, and the ability to convert the entrepreneurship that we're seeing into the business dynamism that we need to recover is gonna turn on supporting these historically disadvantaged places. And to the extent that we play a very small piece in calling for that type of, of support, uh, that's pretty exciting.